Hey, what you doing up there, boy? <laughs> oh, hey, didn't see you there. I'm Colton. Today, we're gonna learn how to bench. Sorry, sorry. Benching is sorry, one of the best bench. exercises. Can you shut up? <laughs> Benching is one of the best exercises that you can do. It is the holy grail of working out, and as a gym bro or gym rat as yourself, you need to know how to bench. Let's get to it. First thing you need to know about benching is how to set up. You want to get to where uh, the bar is right above eye level. Set your hands that shoulder width apart, but a little bit wider. I like to put my fingers right here where the bar gets grippy, go out straight and grab. Now it's very important that this thumb comes over the top. If the thumb is tucked under here, Zooey mama, you're going to the ER. Grab the weight like so, and lift off when you're ready. Another thing that's very important about benching is making sure that your shoulder blades are set in the right position. Your shoulder blades can be apart, or your shoulder blades can be touching. Cameraman, get a good shot of this. Here are my shoulder blades back, and how far I can reach. Here are my shoulder blades forward. Notice the distance that I'm now traveling. That's not a shoulder exercise, it's a chest exercise. Just make sure you keep those shoulder blades back. Okay. Now most people don't know this, but you actually use your feet whenever you bench press. When I'm like this, I'm set, my shoulder blades are back, my hips are set and up. They're not, it's even harder for me to do it wrong. Like this versus my hips being set. And you can actually see, I can actually put my arm right underneath my lower back because I'm really pushing my chest up to activate it. Benching is a full body movement. Of course, you don't use a lot of your body to the same extent that you use other parts like your chest and your arms, but everything makes contact at some point with the bench. So I wanna make sure that my hips are set, and all that means is my hips aren't lagging down and my back isn't completely straight. Um, so you'll see some people doing it like this with their feet tucked, don't do that. Uh, it does make it more isolated on your chest, but there's just no point. Just have your feet nice and wide, your hips set like this with your butt on the chair. You want to make sure that you plant your feet really well. And if you're having trouble wobbling the bar, you can bring them out a little bit wide and kind of stabilize yourself, give yourself a good base. Now when you come in for your reps, make sure again you're at eye level at the bar. And the reason you do that is because these hooks are here. And so if you start right where you want to be, you're going to push up, and then whenever you come back down, you'll hit them. So you actually need to start higher than you want to be in your reps. And for most people, that's about eye level. I'm gonna do it right here, make sure my thumbs are over, my shoulder blades are back, and I'm gonna push up. When I get here, I'm gonna make sure that I gather myself. I wanna be straight up and down and not have any wiggle. I wanna make sure that I'm even on the bar and I'm centered on the bench. Now, when you go down, it's important that you have a straight path of travel. Coming straight down like this with my elbows coming out at a 45 degree angle, hitting my chest right about where the nipples are, and pushing up with my chest. That's different, watch my shoulder blades being out up here, my shoulder blades being in right here. Straight up, straight down, when you're done. When you're benching alone, it's very important that you do not clip the weights. Clipping the weights keeps the plates on the bar. If you get to the bottom and you cannot push back up, you pretty much your only escape is to tip the bar and let the weights slide off Tip it the other way, let them slide off so you can actually move the bar off yourself. Uh, you should not train to failure if you're alone or don't have some kind of safety plan in place. Um, you can also roll the bar, get it stuck here. You can roll it down, try to sit up, and then stand up with it. But that's pretty difficult to do and you put the weight on your hip bones, which is not good also. I like to shoot for three sets of eight, where at the end of the third set, you're really pushing. Uh, try to have a spotter there, but if not, as over time, you'll be able to figure out how much you can bench and you'll feel where your failure point is and you'll be able to stop pretty close to it, but not at it. When in a set, there are a couple things that can help get you through it. Once you get set, you push up, and you're set and you're ready to go back down. Your shoulder blades are together, your feet are stable, and you're ready to go. Um, and this is applicable to pretty much every exercise in the gym. You breathe in on your return stroke and you breathe out on your power stroke. So I'm gonna go. Now 
Now you'll notice I start breathing out after I start pushing. I come down, push, and it helps greatly. You need to do two things in order to have a complete rep. You need to go all the way down to touch your chest with the bar, and you need to go all the way up till your arms lock out. This is not a complete rep. This is not a complete rep. This is a complete rep. Another important part of benching is being a good teammate. Being able to spot is a very important skill to have. You want to make sure that you're there for your partner. Be always ready to grab the bar on the rep. Go ahead and go down. At any point, push up. I am able to help him up and help him out of a sticky situation. Now, if you touch the bar in any way with your breath, your finger, a gust of wind, you have completely disqualified their rep by taking any weight off of it or putting any weight onto it. You are not allowed to influence the bar in any way. There are only two situations where you should ever touch the bar. One, if they explicitly ask you or signal to you to take the bar from them. Or two, if they start to fail the rep. And what I mean by that, if you're going down, don't touch the bar. If they're pushing up, don't touch the bar. If they're pushing up, and not making any forward progress, still do not touch the bar. You only touch the bar without them saying so if they are pushing up and they start going back down or they lose control. Meaning they are pushing up and they go over and start falling off or they push up with one arm and the bar leans. Something where they have no longer have control of the bar. Keaton, why don't you show us what a nice good rep looks like and I'll show you what a typical spot looks like. I'm coming in ready and notice I'm not standing back with my arms out. This gives me horrible leverage. Keaton's a strong boy. Isn't that right, Keaton? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he can bench a lot of weight, more weight than I can curl. So it's important that I stand here, not ready to do this with the bar or this with the bar, but ready to hold it like this. So it's important that I stand close to him. I don't want to overbear him, but I want to be close to the bar. Keaton wants to show us a good rep. He pushes, he gathers himself, and he goes down. He comes up, and at any point, I'm ready, but I'm not influencing his rep. Keaton, what were to happen if you were to fail going up? Well, I would have started going down, and you would have picked it up for me. Why don't we run through that? Okay. I'm here for him, I'm here for him. Still no signal, but he comes down, so I know to help him up. I don't immediately take the bar away from him, I simply take off a couple pounds of force. Whenever you're benching, you have a pretty good idea of how much you can bench. Keaton does as well, and he put that weight on the bar himself or asked me to before he sat down. So if I just take about 10 pounds off by just pushing up lightly, he can do the rest of the work. Never take the bar completely away from somebody. Now, Keaton, why don't you show me another good rep? If this was the last rep of his set, go ahead, Keaton, I can help him rack the bar. He pushes up, he's straight, and he's done. I can help guide him and slide down, place the bar safely where he can't see it. Bench pressing is a very, very common exercise. It's also a power lift. So people compare the numbers on how much they can bench, squat, and deadlift all the time. Do not feel bad if your numbers are not as high as someone else's. They may have been benching for longer than you. They may have better genetics. A lot of things go into play when benching, including form, which hopefully you have a pretty good grasp on by now. The bar itself, is 45 pounds. So if you're working up from that, maybe you're female, maybe you're new to the gym, maybe um, you're coming out of recovery, do not feel bad. Everybody starts somewhere. At some point in everybody's life, they could not bench 45 pounds. It doesn't matter where you are, it just matters where you're going. <laughs> all in all, do not be ashamed. <laughs> lift the weight that you can lift and not a pound more. Oh. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. If you've paid attention to everything along the way and you really applied yourself, now, you've watched a video on how to bench. What's that, dude? <laughs> <laughs> week.